presentation. Okay. And uh, there is, uh, or for example, if you have some long range uh, interactions uh, between localized spins, this can be, for example, due to conduction electrons in metals, and this is called RKKY interaction. Roderman, Kittel, Kasui, Iacida. Uh, for example, I work, uh, I have a paper on, uh, I had a paper on the compound man manganese iodide, and here to describe the modulation vectors of the system in various phases, you should introduce six exchange couplings for this hexagonal lattice. Uh, so you have one magnetic ion and you have six exchange couplings uh, in order to describe everything correctly. And uh, there is a, a, a lot of, uh, there are a lot of modulated spin structures in experiments, which can be observed. And uh, the variety is governed by anisotropic interactions and the Mann cup. Uh, why it is so, we'll talk a little bit later, but here I would like to mention that uh, you can have, uh, for example, some biaxial anisotropy in a low, low symmetry system. You can have magnetodipole interaction. Actually, you always have magnetodipole interaction, which, st which strength is governed by this quantity omega zero, which is usually about uh, tens of Kelvin. So in some systems, it's, it's very important and some not, but it uh, should be checked. Uh, usually at high temperatures, uh, you uh, have uh, a stable phase of uh, sinusoidal spin density wave. This is a spin density wave, uh, transverse one. And uh, its counterpart at small temperatures and uh, relatively large magnetic fields is a fan structure, uh, which looks as follows. So your spins. Uh, projection on a plane perpendicular to B, uh, to external magnetic field B, uh, looks like sinusoidal spin density wave, but you also have a component of magnetization along B. Uh, uh, this is a slide with uh, lots of other pictures. You can have a proper screw. It is when your spins rotate in a plane perpendicular to modulation vector of the spiral. Uh, you can make it conical when applying magnetic field along Q. It becomes a conical screw structure. Uh, if spins rotate in a, uh, in a plane which includes uh, modulation vector, you talk about cy cycloid. It's a magnetic cycloid uh, for, for evident reasons. It's like a ring. Uh, moving uh, on a plane with a dot on it. And uh, it can become this cycloid or proper screw can become elliptical due to some anisotropic, inter anisotropic interactions. And you can apply magnetic fields uh, field in various directions and obtain some conical or even more complicated structures. I have a question. Is it yeah. possible to? Ah, okay, so you hear me. And what is the relation between these 1D uh, chains uh, and uh, real materials, which are bulk and evidently not 1D? Okay, I return to this. Yes, okay. thank you for the question. Uh, this is a simple model where frustration arises. And uh, of course, in nature, if you have something one-dimensional, the physics will be... Um, uh, a lot more complicated than in 3D uh, due to fluctuations, uh, etc. Uh, but in the real nature, you can apply this J1, J2 model if you assume that you also have some interchain uh, exchange interaction. So imagine that you have um, a lattice of a two dimensional lattice of these chains and you go to 3D then. And you have ferromagnetic interchain interaction, which uh, has uh, uh, which has a minor role in uh, for this frustration effect. Uh, so you will have a three-dimensional spiral order uh, with mod with modulation vector along the chains. 
and in pin perpendicular di direction, everything will be ferromagnetic. Okay. I have I have a for a question on this uh, slide as well. Why why is why do you write that? Uh, what complications do we avoid uh, uh, when we replace the anti-ferromagnetic uh, interchain uh, interaction with ferromagnetic one? Why why not leaving it uh, anti-ferromagnetic? Uh, this is uh, yes, thank you for the question. But this is just an illustration, and I uh, for definiteness. Uh, talking about ferromagnetic interchain interaction, but uh, actually it uh, doesn't matter uh, right. at, all, <laughs> at all, yes? So you can imagine, uh, uh, you can imagine arbitrary for uh, exchange interaction picture and you will uh, need to maximize it for Fourier transform. So uh, as long as, as you have uh, basically what you see, if you have, uh, if all the J's are on the previous slide, if you can go back, please, again, if they are all anti-ferromagnetic, then you still have frustration, right? Yes, yes. This is just for illustration purposes. In order to this equation is correct, we need this minus and this plus. But if you have plus here, plus J1, you will have something like cosine pi minus Q equal to J1 to for J2. Okay, okay thank you. So it's it uh, it is not crucial here. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All, all this is classical. The question is: Is it also true when you consider the quantum case with quantum uh, fluctuations? Um, uh, quantum fluctuations in low dimensions uh, can destroy this uh, this uh, very simple picture, but it can be stable to them. So it uh, it is a matter of further investigations here, but. This is just an illustration of a basic idea of non-collinear order due to frustra frustration. Yes. Well, my, my point is that, uh, say, in two dimensions, the ground state of ferromagnets and antiferromagnets are very different because the antiferromagnets uh, have uh, quantum fluctuations and the ground state can differ. Yeah, yes, ab ab absolutely. And uh, uh, here in a frustrated case, you, for example, in low dimensions can have uh, some exotic phases like pneumatic phase uh, due to some uh, quantum re reasons and not a spiral non-collinear magnetic order. Yes, I so, also, so yes. I also uh, have a question. Yeah, uh, I think it is related to Amnon's question. Why don't you have a term which is second order in the Jelushinsky moria vector? We know from uh, experience that this term contributes to the same order as the Jelushinsky moria term itself. Uh, uh, excuse, excuse me, please. Uh, I have some troubles with my speakers, I suppose. What was the question about dzyalashinsky marie interaction and spiral yeah. structures? What yes. I wanted to say is that it is known that, well, the, the Jalushinsky vector appears to first order in the Hamiltonian, but it should also induce a theorem which is second order in the jalushinsky moria vector, namely it is a scalar then, because they both contribute at the end of the spectrum uh, in the same order. Uh, I'm not sure that I catch the question correctly. Zelashinsky marine interaction can be very important, but here I talk about central symmetric structures without Zelashinsky marine interaction. Uh, so, uh, so there is to no Zelashinsky Maria because it was in your first slide. In the first slide, let's check. Okay. <laughs> uh, Okay, I should talk explicitly that below, here and after, we will not consider Zelashinsky marine interaction, okay. except for one case of Skirnians where I just uh, point out the main idea and there will not be any Zelashinsky marine interaction. I understand. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you for the question. Yes, it's a, it's a very important matter. Yes. Um, okay, let's proceed. So we have way a lot of structures and uh, 
it's this uh, structures uh, I should point out they are called a single modulated structures and you can also have uh, more complicated modulated structures which I will mention below a little bit okay uh, one uh, one motivation, one of possible motivations to study this uh, magnetic structures uh, is related to multiferroics. Multiferroic is a compound which uh, which uh, possess uh, two kind of order or maybe more in a single phase. For example, you have some magnetic structure and you have uh, ferroelectricity in the same phase. Then we will talk. Then you talk about the multiferroic material, and importantly, these degrees of freedom should be strongly, strongly coupled. Why it is uh, uh, technologically interesting? Because you can, for example, switch magnetic ordering uh, using electrical field, or vice versa. So multi, in multiferroics, you can establish co cross control because between. Uh, two kind of, of orders. And this has some interesting technological application as it's shown here, for example, it uh, was about multiferrox. Uh, uh, and uh, in uh, non-collinear spin ordering is interesting because uh, we can talk about, for example, multiferrox of spin origin. Uh, there was a very uh, informative uh, review on this topic by the three authors in the report in progress in physics. And nowadays people uh, distinguish three main mechanisms of multiferroics of spin origin. It is exchange friction model, uh, you, it is inverse zelashinsky maria model and spin dependent PD hybridization model. Uh, I will talk about this in many detail, but uh, we see that two uh, two letter mechanisms require non-collinear spin order. Spin order. For example, when you see when you look at this equation for electrical polarization, if you have non-collinear spins, neighboring spins, you can observe non-zero electrical polarization. And this is called inverse zelashinsky maria model because this picture is uh, uh, kind of uh, reverse to general picture of emergence of zelashinsky maria interaction. Oh, I have, so a, have question. a question. Yes. yes, just here as ij just means the projection of some mean spin average over bulk material. Cartesian components of main spin polarization. Uh, yeah, thank you for the question. Yes, I and J are just uh, spins on the lattice. They're numer uh, numerated ah. with these indices, and this is vectors. So you have uh, you have nearest neighbors, S I S and and S J. You, for example, calculate the cross product, and then you have your electrical polarization, either zero or not. Ah, so this is zero. microscopic notation. Okay. Yes, it's a, it's a their notation from this uh, review. So, magnetic frustration, as I told you before, lead, can lead to non-collinear spin order. And these materials are usually multiferroics, or not very usually, but uh, lots of them are multiferroics. So there was study. Okay, let's proceed. Uh, another topic which is very important in the in non-collinear magnetism is skirmions. I won't talk about them today a lot because this was a topic of, of my last of my seminar last year. But skirmions are topologically protected field configuration in nonlinear field theories. And in condensed matter, uh, the, and this is related to zelashinsky maria interaction, they were shown to be stable soliton-like solutions. Uh, due to Lifshitz invariance, or in other terms, the lashinsky maria interaction, this is a famous paper of Bogdanov and Yablonsky. And skirmions, has, uh, skirmions have, a very, have a lot of technological and promising applications. There are some topological whole effect, and 
uh, you can write or delete single skewerments. You can use them as uh, bits in information devices and, and etc. So a lot of applications. And uh, let's turn to skewerment crystal or skewerment lattices. Uh, they can also be stabilized in compounds with Zelashinsky marine interaction. Uh, for example, in cubic heli-magnets, you have a Zelashinsky marine interaction in this form where M is the magnetization is average spin on a lattice of a lattice. And uh, uh, in famous paper by Milbalak and uh, co-authors, they observe this skirmion crystal, uh, skirmion lattice in manganese silicide using neutron scattering. And uh, this is a famous phase diagram of this compound. The skirmion lattice is stable in this uh, pocket near the other temperature, which is called A phase. What's important here is that uh, the period of this Kirman lattice is uh, uh, of the order of uh, uh, ratio between exchange interaction and Zelashinsky marine interaction. So it's pretty, pretty large because Zelashinsky marine interaction is relativistically small. Uh, but in a frustrated case, and it was a topic of my previous talk, uh, frustration and isotropy and chi symmetry can stabilize sky skirmion lattices with uh, nanometer size skirmions. And the uh, density of topological charge of these structures is uh, large. And uh, so the topological properties are enhanced, and the topological charge usually is given by this. Equation, so you can calculate it for your spin off. But uh, my topic of today's talk will be about uh, low symmetry frustrated magnets. And uh, so we will not talk about skirmions. We will talk about various non collinear phases and their competition with collinear phases. And uh, the motivation of this study was a complicated phase diagram of multiferroic manganese tungsten oxygen. Uh, uh, this is a, a pretty uh, interesting compound, which was, uh, uh, which uh, attracts a lot of attention of a community. And is, for example, this interest can be stimulated by this phase diagram. You have a lot of phases. Here you have sinusoidal spin density wave. Here you have a fun phase conical phase here, uh, counter anti ferromagnetic order here. Uh, this is a picture from paper, or excuse me, of a group of Mike Zhitonovsky, which you, who is a quite a known physicist from Grenoble, the theoretician, and the, this is their notations. So I F1, Y is the counter anti ferromagnetic order. AF2 is a cycloid. And F1 is uh, just a nail order. It's not a simple nail order. And you have here uh, not a uh, periodicity of uh, one lattice parameter, but of two. This is so-called two up to down spin structure. But the technique to describe it, it is very similar with uh, usual anti markets. So this authors obtain this phase diagram and numerically, and my motivation was to describe this consecutive phase transitions. Here you have five magnetic field induced phase transitions at low temperature. Uh, analytically, and using and propose some equations which will describe, for example, uh, fields of these phase transitions. Uh, uh, the phase AF2 is also multiferroic, right? Uh, yes, yes. Thank you for this. Uh, we, we have done some mean field calculations on that too. And uh, the Jaloshinsky Moria interaction plays an important role there. Um, uh, here, on uh, yes, that's a very important point. Thank you. Here we have. Uh, uh, no Zelashinsky marine interaction for a spin subsystem, but when you have a non collinear spin, spin ordering, uh, this inverse Zelashinsky mechanism, marine mechanism plays a role f 
for calculation of electric polarization. But uh, this is for, for magnetic subsystems, this is a weak effect which, uh, which can be included, uh, you know, after other calculations. But yes, indeed, uh, in this non collinear, in these helical structures, uh, uh, inverse Zalashinsky marine inter mechanism is relevant and is important for ferroelectric fer fer properties. Okay. Okay, and um, uh, previously uh, uh, we considered uh, uh, temperature induced uh, phase transitions here and uh, noted that these temperature induced phase transitions can be ascribed to uh, inter can be described using mean field approach including magnetodipole interaction. Uh, so let's proceed with phase transitions. Uh, the first phase transition, which I would like to describe, discuss in detail, is a spiral plane flow. For example, you have a spiral plane in Z, Y, and Z, Y plane, which is an easy plane for spins in our model. Then you apply magnetic field in this plane, and then your, your plane suddenly uh, flops to perpendicular direction, to perpendicular plane. And this... Uh, this part is based on these two papers, and let's proceed. Uh, this is some experiment uh, which illustrate uh, the main idea why it is important. This is a very nice experiment on Cooper Mohlerite too. You have modular in this structure, you have modulation vector along B axis. You have magnetic Cooper ions, uh, which are blue balls here. And at small magnetic fields, due to magnetocrystalline anisotropy, you have cycloid in BC plane. When you take two nearest neighbors along B axis, you have their spins in BC plane. So SY cross SJ is along A axis. And the, the vector E ij which connects them is along c axis is along b axis excuse me so you have a polarization along the c axis here electrical polarization for large magnetic field for strong magnetic fields larger than four tesla you have a spiral in ac plane and perpendicular direction and so you have si sj along the axis and you have no more no longer you have your electric polarization here. So there is a spiral plane flow which completely changes uh, ferroelectric behavior of this compound. And uh, just to remind the basic idea of spin flop in, in an isotropic antiferromagnet, which is important for subsequent discussion, let's see on these pictures. Uh, you have an easy axis along Z, you have that is an easy axis in your system, and you have magnetization of your sublattices along that, this uh, Z axis at small magnetic fields. Uh, but unfortunately, on a classical level, this uh, structure doesn't feel magnetic field at all. So at some magnetic field, the counted antiferromagnetic order uh, uh, pre prevails this uh, antiferromagnetic order. Uh, uh, here you have a content angle alpha, which governs interaction, which is, which is due to interaction with external magnetic field. So the structure B fills the magnetic field. So uh, we, we, see, well, we see that content uh, antiferromagnetic order is bad from the anisotropy point of view, but is good from the magnetic field point of view. So they compete with each other and there is a spin flop, so-called uh, spin flop transition, the first order phase transition at magnetic fields much smaller than the, than the saturation magnetic field where all the spins are uh, polarized along the field for small anisotropes. Uh, so this is a picture which will be used below many times. Uh, our model includes exchange interaction, which is frustrated, but 
uh, it is not stated exactly why, what is the reason for frustration. And we have biaxial anisotropy due to a lower symmetry of the system. Also, we have Zeeman interaction with the external magnetic, with the uniform external magnetic field. field. Uh, so, uh, what is important here is that I will assume below that JQ Fourier transform of exchange interaction have two equivalent incommensurate maxima, Q equal to plus minus K. Uh, the technique which is used here for, spar for a helicoid phases is the so-called Kaplan helix. You quantize spin operators in a local coordinate frame, which rotates, as you can see here. And this Kaplan helix basis is very suitable for conical spirals uh, to describe them. And we use a Halstein primakov spin operators representation in, our, in a following approximate form in order to discuss the classical energy of such a structure, of uh, considered structures. Uh, let's start with the case of a, of a zero magnetic field. And we see that we have um, anisotropy in YZ plane. And the, this is a helicoid plane in the absence of an external field. Uh, when we use a Kaplan helix description, including this bosonic representation, we arrive to the Hamiltonian in an approximate form. We have a classical energy. We have linear in bosonic apparatus terms, and we here have the linear part of the Hamiltonian. Uh, uh, what we should do next is uh, to eliminate these uh, linear terms. This, uh, and importantly, this linear term is proportional to the difference of, of this in plane anisotropies. So this is a small, quite small quantity, uh, uh, and we can eliminate it using the technique of the shift in operators. So we uh, we assume that we should shift the apparatus in the following way, and we can calculate uh, these average values for apparatus A to K, A to K, dagger, uh, etc. Uh, what is important here is in the linear part of the Hamiltonian, we have this normal and anomalous terms, but we also have amplops. But the amplops are proportional to the, to, to the anisotropy. And we will use a smallness of anisotropy in comparison with exchange interaction. So uh, these amplops ter amplop terms provide corrections which are small. And first we can, at first we can neglect them. Uh, other fortunate uh, uh, issue is that we have 2K operators here from anisotropy, and we have 1K operators from magnetic field along the axis. Uh, so if we apply magnetic field two on, uh, with the accuracy of our theory, we can uh, treat these corrections to the structure energy, energy and perform this kind of shifts independently. Um, I should point out that this calculation should, can be also done using Kubo formalism and green, funs, green functions for this kind of Hamiltonian, uh, but we will have anomalous and normal green functions. So this will, I suppose this, that uh, this won't be simpler than what I talk about. Uh, so as a result of the condensation, <laughs> uh, if I can say so, of this apparatus is the correction to the spiral ordering. Now you have uh, some ellipticity of your spiral. So it becomes uh, distorted. And you observe a third harmonics here due to anisotropy. Due to magnetic field, you observe the zero harmonic and, uh, two, and uh, other even harmonics in your spin structure. You can calculate the corrections to the ground state energy. This is correction from the anisotropy and correction from the magnetic fields looks like this. 
Uh, importantly, JK is the maximum of exchange interaction, so this combination in the denominator is always positive. <laughs> in other cases, this theory won't, will be fail. So, uh, what uh, what is pertinent uh, pertinent to note here is that with the accuracy of our approach, magnetic field and anisotropy don't don't interfere, and uh, it is easy to show that unclad terms will result in the energy corrections of the third order in an isotropy at least. Uh, now we should compare the energy obtained for the plane helicoid with the conical spiral. Here we have another degree of freedom, which is called the conical angle alpha. alpha. And we take for definitely the first magnetic field along that axis. So the spiral plane here is x, y. It's where the spin shot eight. And the corrections to the structure energy are calculated using the same techniques and as on the two previous slides. You have anisotropy in the spiral plane, which is governed by the quantity E here. And you have magnetic field effect here. Um, so it is easy to see that this correction from magnetic field uh, is lower than this correct correction due to magnetic field. So at some at certain magnetic field, conical spiral will overcome will overcome uh, the uh, helicoid cycloidal, and you have a spiral flop phase transition. Uh, the ex expression for this phase transition is as follows. It looks like a spin flop transition in a usual antiferromagnets and isotropic, but you have some combination of exchange interactions here. It is a general form. We don't we do not assume some smallness of K here or something like that, as it usually done in Zelashinsky Maria uh, systems, for example. And we note that this field. Ash flop is much smaller than the saturation field, which without an anisotropic correction, which reads as follows. So it's usually much smaller due to the smallness of the anisotropy. Uh, we also consider arbitrary magnetic field direction and dipolar forces. Uh, so analysis of uh, possible stable orientations of helicoid planes shows uh, uh, that the spiral plane flop can be observed only for magnetic fields in the easy plane. So in our model, you should apply magnetic field in YZ plane, and you will observe a spiral plane flop at this magnetic field, where T governs, uh, T describes an angle of magnetic field in YZ plane like this. So this is a general expression for arbitrary magnetic field direction in a plane. For other magnetic plane, magnetic field directions, you will observe a smooth rotation of a spiral plane. And also, instead of biaxial anisotropy, you can consider dipolar forces, magnetodipolar interaction. You obtain, you can obtain Hamiltonian of this interaction in this form. And uh, this uh, looks like momentum dependent by actual anisotropy when you diagonalize this tensor D alpha beta at, um, at uh, the modulation vector K. And uh, dipole forces play man minor role in the modulation vector determination. However, they can be included in our uh, theory, you can, instead of D, take the difference of these eigen, eigenvalues at the modulation vector, and instead of E, this one, and you just use this equation for flow, spiral plane flop in order to discuss this phase transition if we, in the case of magnetodipole interaction. Um, uh, now we can see we turn to a case of moderate anisotropy. And we consider competition with some commensurate magnetic order. K, K0 is the vector of this collinear structure, for example, described in nail order and two up to down spin structures, etc. Still, we, we 
implies that jk is maximum and, and it is greater larger than jk zero. But uh, the anisotropy can make commensurate order fa favorable. For example, for magnetic field equal to zero, if you have the difference in anisotropy that d minus e larger than this f constant, which I introduce here, f is positive, you need to consider competition between usual anti usual antiferromagnetic order, counted antiferromagnetic order when you apply magnetic field, this uh, this uh, cycloid and the conical uh, this conical structure. Uh, the spiral helicoid structure and the conical structure. We we have the energies in such a form, and then analysis shows that if you have d minus e greater than this f parameter, then antiferromagnetic phase is a ground state at zero magnetic field. But instead of observing this spin flop field you will observe some scenario phase transitions from C to, to E. You can have a phase transition from antiferromagnetic order to, to helicoid order and then to counted antiferromagnetic order. So this, is, uh, this can be regarded as, uh, as, uh, uh, as a two phase, as a splitting of a spin flow spin flop transition in antiferromagnet with the intermediate uh, helicoid phase and this is other phase transitions also i can calculate within this approach uh, the the so the fields of these phase transitions what is important here is at moderate magnetic fields if e is greater than f anisotropy E is greater than F parameter. Counted uh, antiferromagnetic order is preferable. However, is, if E is uh, smaller than F, then XY phase is preferable. So you can start with uh, uh, commensurate collinear magnetic order, and then you can have a, a conical spiral. Okay, that's all with it. So let's turn to part which is devoted to fun phase and strong fields. So oh, the talk the before I talk about uh, small magnetic fields regime. Now we turn to strong magnetic fields regime. We have a conical phase, and uh, at uh, moderate question, magnetic fields we have a conical phase. A question before you continue. Uh, yes. So far you consider the ground state and uh, small excitations around that ground state. What happens at uh, at higher temperature? Uh, how do you complete the phase diagram as function of both temperature and magnetic field? Uh, this is a very important question, actually. Thank you. But uh, my treat my analytical treatment is uh, directly applicable to a zero temperature case. And what's, what's happened at larger temperatures uh, was not considered using this technique. We can assume that at small temperatures, all these results will be correct, but at larger temperatures, at higher temperatures, uh, the phase the transitions will be different and the sequences could be different. Uh, so that this is a small temperature yet. description. So that was not done yet. Yes. Yes. Okay. And uh, usually for magnetic system, moderate temperatures regime, uh, which are con comparable with the order temperature, but uh, for example, two times smaller is, I suppose, the most difficult one. So you have large temperature uh, fluctuations, you have uh, your, st you still have your elementary excitations impact and so on. So this is a zero temperature discussion, actually. Yes. Uh, so for our conical phase, at, at moderate magnetic fields, we have linear terms with zero uh, momentum and with plus minus 2k momentum. Uh, linear terms with zero momentum are eliminated by proper choice of a conical angle. And now we see that our conical angle alpha is governed by this ratio between magnetic field and so-called saturation field of this conical phase. I should note that this is not true saturation field. 
but uh, this is a quantity which appears here in this analysis. And uh, we should uh, next eliminate this kind of linear terms with 2k and minus 2k. And we derive cumbersome some corrections to spin to this uh, conical spin order. So this uh, uh, structure will be distorted and, and so on as before, as, as in our previous discussion. But we have a case of particular interest is uh, when your conical angle satisfies the following relation. So is in the near saturation regime. In this regime, our corrections to the, uh, to the magnetic order are large. So you have, here you have alpha, tilde alpha and here you have tilde alpha in the denominator. So the second term here or the second term here is not small anymore. So the ellipticity of your spiral in a, of your conical spiral in the spiral plane becomes very large. Uh, ratio between y, average spin along y-axis and average spin along x-axis. And our perturbative approach fails. But we see that uh, here, we see the hint that our conical phase uh, should be changed with some other phase, for example, fun one, the fun phase. Uh, I, will, I also have some Monte Carlo simulation on this issue and find that fun phase should emerge. So let's turn to the fun phase. Ah, okay, just a moment. Before we turn to the fun phase, this is kind of speculation. We can calculate magnon spectrum in this conical phase, uh, neglecting the anisotropy induced corrections. And what I see here is that at the point which is equal to minus 2k, uh, at strong magnetic fields, when field magnetic field becomes stronger and stronger, you have some retonization of your spin wave spectrum at the point minus 2k. Uh, so according to subsequent discussion, we can speculate that this magnets touch zero energy at this critical field when the conical phase become unstable and the condensation of such magnets restores broken Z2 symmetry. Because you have right, right and left spirals, right and left conical spirals, so you have broken. Uh, that to symmetry, but this condensation sh should restore it. It is easy to show using these equations. So there is some spectrum retonization and the critical field here. Let's discuss fun phase. Oh, I should finish briefly, I suppose. Yes, let's discuss quickly fun phase in a quick way. So there were several discussions, so uh, you can take 10 more minutes. Okay, thank you very much. As, uh, so for fun phase description, uh, I developed some technique, which is uh, maybe quite similar to Kaplan helix, but have important differences. Uh, so this fun phase is as pre-saturation phase is our analysis. Uh, you already seen the fun phase. This is my picture, which is not very nice, I suppose, but this is how I think about this fun phase. Uh, to, in order to describe this phase, I propose approximate this approximate basis from this for, for this phase. This is approximate by local basis for, for spin quantization, neglecting higher order in this beta parameter terms. The beta is amplitude of transverse spin component. And we still use Kalstein Primakov spin operators approximation in the approximate form. Um, so as before, we obtain Hamiltonian as a, as a sum of three terms. It's a classical energy linear terms and uh, bilinear terms. We have classical energy in this form. You see that it is quite similar to Landau expansion and beta, param beta parameters, beta squared, beta in the fourth power. So we immediately observe the fun structure saturation field, which is like this. It is different with the conical phase saturation field by the factor two here. So, so this is um, a real saturation field on a classical energy level for our problem. 
we also have in this problem we also have linear terms which are all odd operators so you have arbitrary n here zero one two three etc but all these terms come with the coefficient beta in corresponding degree so the the first terms are not as small, but the next terms are very small. They're beta in third power, beta in five, fifth power, etc. So, in order to eliminate linear terms with n equal to zero here, we choose beta parameter as follows. This parameter also minimizes this classical energy. So we are on a, a, a still ground here, and as a terms condensation after we condense the operators after we eliminate operators with n equal to zero lead to a beta in a six power corrections to this energy so they can be safely neglected and we obtain the energy of a fun face in this form this is about the energy but i before i predict previously i predict the transition to a conical phase at some critical field where does it come from? Now we can analyze the bilinear part of the corresponding Hamiltonian. It should be positively defined. Neglecting, uh, definite, neglecting large positive terms, we can discuss our Hamiltonian only in this, uh, using this uh, approximate form, where we include only AK and A minus K operators and their metian conjugate. This is our coefficients. They are written with an accuracy of beta square squared. And we obtain the Hamiltonian in the, this matrix form. This matrix should be positively defined. Fortunately, due to its symmetry, we can calculate all the agent values here. They as follows. And after plugging these coefficients to these agent values, we find that we have a critical beta parameter or a critical magnetic field. Below this field, this Hamiltonian becomes unstable. One of the eigenvalues becomes negative. Or at larger beta parameters, this structure also becomes, un becomes unstable because beta grows with magnetic field. So when magnetic field uh, uh, decreases, beta increases, okay? So we have criticality oh. here, and this this is a this this is a field of a transition between a fun phase and the conical uh, distorted conical spiral phase. Uh, okay. okay. I have uh, I have a question from previous slide. Mm -hmm. Uh, so uh, on this slide, the maximal power of beta is two. So, uh, but on the, again previous slide, the maximal power of beta is four. So uh, okay, uh, okay. So, so, so should not we consider the maximal power here also four, or it is precise uh, precise formulation in beta without um. any neglecting. Uh, from the point of view of classical energy, yes, you can go to bet beta in a fourth power, but here it's safe only to consider to beta in a second power. It's a, it, it, there is no contradiction. The mass is correct. Indeed, you can call uh, the accuracy of these terms is uh, uh, determined by that fact that I don't uh, condense, uh, for example, apparatus A plus minus three here. But you have beta in the third power here for this operators. So this operators condensation will lead to corrections of the order of beta in the third and, the, and higher powers here. Uh, it's a little bit hard to uh, guess to tell you why exactly. It's, uh, you should look for cal the calculations, yes. But is this is correct with the, uh, and you cannot go further in beta powers in this Hamiltonian. Okay. So let's discuss sequences of phase transitions. Can you please remind us uh, what beta is? How is it defined? Uh, be, how is beta defined? Yes. yes how, is it, how is it related to the other parameters? 
Yeah, beta is an amplitude of a transverse spin component in uh, the fan phase. Like just like this, you have z axis along the magnetic field, you have y axis perpendicular to it, and beta is an amplitude of this other parameter. But then you said that beta depends on the magnetic field. How does it depend on that? Yes, of course, this is a corresponding equation. After you minimize, yes. Okay. Yes, after I minimize, beta is dependent on magnetic field, just like Landau or the parameters and in the usual phase transitions picture. So is this phase transition second order? Uh, yes, yes, this is a second order phase transition because you can continuously uh, move from the fun phase to the uh, co distorted conical phase. In, uh, okay. So then fluctuations so fluctuations may be can uh, make the, it uh, first order transition, but with our accuracy, it is a second order phase transition. Okay. Thank you. So we now turn to sequences of phase transition. Now we, as before, assume the competition with some commensurate magnetic order. And if you have this commensurate magnetic order at moderate magnetic fields, you have, uh, so, so you have E greater than F and you have this cuff order in the, at moderate fields. But our analysis shows that you will always have your fun phase as a pre-saturation one until this F parameter is greater than zero. Once again, we can distinguish between this case and this case of sequences of phase transitions. This is some mass, and we can calculate these fields of phase transitions. Uh, so at strong magnetic fields, we predict that along with these simple phase transitions, you will have some complicated sequences of them also in an uh, anisotropic case. Okay, I have... <laughs> Uh, I'm out of time, but uh, I will be very brief here. This is an experimental manganese valve tungsten oxygen phase diagram. It's very complicated, as I said before, and you have to go to very large magnetic fields in uh, uh, which are hardly achievable in many labs. So this is uh, some state of art, uh, art experiment. And uh, this is our numerical calculation not our, but calculation, numerical calculations from this group, it's our motivation. Here you have one, two, three, four, five, five magnetic field induced phase transitions. These are their parameters, which they use in their calculations. And you see that E is greater than F. So you indeed will, you indeed will have counted antiferromagnetic order than the conical phase and the fun phase. And we have the following numbers uh, for five phase transition using color formalism. And we have successfully described this, this numbers too, I suppose. Here, for example, you have 20, 20, approximately 22. Here you, you have approximately 22 and a half. So the difference is very small here, I suppose. And so successful descriptions of all five phase transitions can be reported. This is for magnetic field along the easy axis. For magnetic field along the more middle axis, you have no spin flop transitions because it's a middle axis and you have counted order. Then you have your fun phase and then you have saturated phase as I predict using within the, with this picture. We also discuss magnetic fields here, critical magnetic fields here, and they are in good correspondence with the numerical data of that group. But I should point out here that it's uh, surprising because for D equal to 0.4, we have critical beta parameter equal to 0.78. This is not, it is not much smaller than, than one. Uh, so it's quite large, but our theory still works uh, qualitative, semi-quantitatively, I can say here, despite the anisotropy is, uh, is really strong in this case. How was this phase diagram calculated? Um, uh, they calculate this phase diagram using uh, uh, real, uh, using Monte Carlo 
approach, I suppose, yes. Yes, using Monte Carlo simulation. Since, since you have all the older parameters, why can one not do just a simple mean field theory to get this phase diagram? Landau uh, expansion. Mean field theory, by mean field theory, you mean what? Uh, kind I mean, a Landau thing? expansion in the older parameters. Uh, Landau, ah, yes, thank you. Landau expansion in the other parameters works, works quite well in the uh, tem at temperatures near the order of temperature. We can yeah, discuss. It could, it could give the two phase transitions. Uh, if the fan phase is sufficiently narrow, then it would give also the next phase transition. Yes, yes. Using plant, uh, and actually it. Actually, it was done uh, in some papers, uh, also including dipolar interaction uh, and so on. So this, uh, this, for example, high temperature behavior can be easily discussed using uh, mean field uh, Landau theory. But for example, in order to get here, you should have very large, large difference of this temperature in this one, and it is uh, inaccessible that is, that is by, cool. by Landau expansion. I shall send you our papers on the same topic. Uh, thank you. Yes, I will read it with a, a much interest, I suppose. Yes. So, so, yes, to summarize, you can have, a, your, for example, mean field theory for a large, for high temperature region of the phase diagram. And uh, for the low temperature region of the phase diagram, uh, there are other approaches, either numerical or analytical, as we developed. Oh yes, and we did successfully discussed this uh, this region of the phase diagram at low temperatures. Uh, yes. So this is my conclusions, but uh, I suppose we discussed them already. And uh, thank you very much for your kind attention and uh, very interesting and uh, insightful discussion. Uh, thank you, Oleg, for this uh, very nice uh, seminar. Uh, let us thank Oleg. And uh, we have still time for a few more questions. Uh, yes, uh, Sergei, please go ahead. And I have a question. So uh, in somewhere in the middle of your presentation, you have uh, demonstrated the, the uh, structure with the periodicity to not one side, uh, maybe back, back, back. Well, uh, maybe even before, even before, 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 before. Okay. This one, yes? Yes, yes, yes. So does well. Uh, maybe this will show that it was difficult to, to, to very well understand what happens, but does it uh, matches with the, uh, the second part of the work? And if yes, uh, from where can we understand this periodicity of two? Yeah, yeah, this should co co correspond to the, the second part of the work. Yeah, so that's a very nice question. Maybe I... Uh, hadn't talked about it as much as it was needed. So, okay, this structure with the periodicity two uh, have the modulation vector instead of pi for antiferromagnet, it has the modulation vector pi divided by two. And uh, so you have to spin up to spin down and it is not a, a spiral, it's just uh, this structure. Pi divided, uh, so you have pi divided by two. And uh, it is uh, just a simple mass that, for example, this equation for the energy of the structure, originally written for antiferromagnets with modulation vector pi, they are also applicable in this case when you consider k0 as pi divided by two. So these equations are as well applicable for uh, are applicable for antiferromagnets as well for these two up to down magnetic structures. Uh, and finally, when I compare with the experimental data, you can see here the real the modulation vector, which is maximum, which corresponds to the maximum of the exchange interaction, 
is 0 0.455 and it competes with this commensurate structure with the pi divided by two uh, that component of modulation there. Uh, so this is where the, this is where this uh, two up to down spin structure emerges in uh, our comparison with the numerics of uh, Zhitomirsky group. Okay, and the, uh, the, this structure uh, we, is a commensurate, and at uh, small magnetic fields it is collinear. So when I draw this, when I draw this kind of sketch, I assume that this it is applicable to this to up to down magnetic structure too. So there is some universality. You can discuss either competition with uh, some nail ordering, checkerboard ordering, or to up to down structures. And in manganese with tungsten oxygen, it is to up to down magnetic structure, which is important as a competitor of non-collinear magnet of helical magnetic structures and chiral magnetic structures. Okay, we have also a question from Olga. Yes, uh, thank you very much for your talk, Arden. I actually have uh, two very naive questions. Uh, actually, the first one is, um, here you consider some phase transition is uh, in this compound. And are there any, any other uh, compounds where this or maybe uh, other phase transition can be observed. Uh, thank you very much for the question. I, I, yes, yes. Actually, <laughs> you presented here some cupium chloride compound where some phase transition was observed. So, are there any materials compounds? Uh. For example, uh, uh, as, is there some material where the latest uh, fan phase is observed? Uh, yes, uh, thank you very much for the question. Yes, there are, there are actually lots of them and there are a lot of experiments, papers and so on. And this and uh, why I talk about this phase, uh, this kind of phase diagram, I, Yes, this kind yes, of phase yes. diagram and it's slow because uh, it looks complicated for me, for example. Yes, uh, we, we have five consecutive magnetic phase induced phase transitions at low temperatures. And uh, this is a so-called, uh, so I can say bright illustration maybe for, for developed approach and, uh, and uh, was interesting motivation to develop it. But of course, you have a lots of lots of compounds uh, with uh, uh, various phase diagrams, and the fan phases and other uh, phases can be observed was observed there. But uh, we have we have actually no time to discuss them. But I believe that uh, our findings are applicable in many cases, and. <laughs> Also, I, I also I used some of my equations obtained in this project in other discussions, for example, of schemionic phases in some uh, uh, f magnetic fields uh, along uh, not, not uh, high symmetry direction, but along low symmetry directions. So, so uh, I believe that uh, applicability is uh, not very narrow for my manganese tungsten oxygen, but for uh, many compounds, it can be used. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Yeah. I, I actually, regarding those chromions, uh, actually on the slide 11, you showed some picture from experimental work or where some a sample of uh, with the chromions. Yes, here, the second one. Uh, actually, maybe I missed what the sizes of uh, this sample and uh, actually one scanion here. Um, uh, here, as, here, this is a picture uh, applicable for many type of skin, skin uh, It is the hexagonal tight packing. 
But in Milbao paper, they measured the effect in manganese silicide. And I suppose the spiral period there is about 20 nanometers or 30 nanometers, something like that. And this is uh, approximately the size of a skirmion, uh, skirmion cell here, about 20, 20 nanometers. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I also have a question. Uh, if you can go to the manganese tungsten oxygen phase diagram. Uh, so uh, I think it was mentioned that this is also multiferroic material, right? And you were discussing uh, before that um, with electric field, then you can also, uh, it's it's like a third dimension in this phase diagram. So uh, I was wondering, was this considered or uh, is it, what do you expect? And could you use uh, your approach also to study that case? Um, uh, thank you for the nice questions. This is quite interesting. Yes, uh, for example, um, with a, an electrical field, on a general grounds, you can enhance the stability region of your helical phases because when you apply electrical field, uh, you, you will interact with your polarization, thus you will induce some zelashinsky marie interaction, uh, which, is, which strength will be governed by this electrical field. And... Uh, uh, so this zelashinsky marie interaction can play uh, a favor, a role uh, and favor some helical structures in a region when you already should see some uh, commensurate magnetic structures. And I'm not aware of such experiments because it is a, just a, it's a theoretical talk and discussion, what I tell you here. And... Uh, Maybe you need very strong electrical field. It's usually depend on uh, on the strength of this magnetoelectric effect. But I'm aware of some experiments on another multiferro compound, manganese yadid, which I briefly mentioned in the beginning of my talk. Oh, excuse me, where it is, I lost. Yes, this is, and it has hexagonal lattice and using electrical field, uh, using electrical fields, people, uh, some, uh, some scholars switch between various directions. Actually, there are, there are three of them. Uh, there are six of them in hexagonal planes of, spy of the modulation vector of corresponding helical structures. Using electrical field, they were able to switch them. And this was a very nice experiment in physical regulators. And the first up is Takasi Kurumadi. And uh, this, was, this was shown exp explicitly in the experiment, possibility to control a modulation vector direction using electrical field. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Can you uh, also incorporate this in, in your uh, theory, in your approaches? Um, uh, Would it change? Okay, we, can, we can include we can include additional coupling with the electric uh, with the electric polarization of this guy and this guy, and include this into the Hamiltonian. Then you include your electrical field interaction with uh, polarization, and then you have a problem with. Uh, with two degrees of freedom, magnetic and electric, which uh, inter which has some interplay between them. Uh, so mm -hmm. yes, uh, yes you can. Mm -hmm. As Zan says, yes you can, but uh, it is expected usually that uh, the effect will be not very crucial for for the phase diagrams. Uh, but near the ordering temperature, where the thermal fluctuations are large. Uh, you can uh, you can observe giant magnetoelectric response in these compounds, and that's what was, was very interesting and uh, well discussed in the literature. So so you can find something very interesting in that direction. 
but it is significant. It makes uh, the problem much more complicated computationally. But it's possible mm -hmm. to discuss such matter. Okay, thank you. Do we have any uh, other questions from the audience? Well, yeah, yes, Sergey, please go ahead. I have a question. So, could you please drive to some of this Zhitomirsky phase diagram? Any slide with, with it? Is this one? Yes, yes, yes. So, yeah, it is. So, you have at the at the temperature equal zero, uh, some slopes of this phase is coming to the to the vertical H axis, magnetic field axis. So is this possible uh, to somehow predict the, uh, this? Uh, well, first, is this a critical exponents? Uh, so I, you mean this division uh, division lines between the phases as a functions of uh, of a magnetic uh, field at some finite temperature. So, uh, so first of all, if, if I will be able to explain it correctly, is this some critical uh, critical exponents uh, in these places, and it is possible to predict the values at low temperatures? Um, uh, thank you. This is an insightful question, and. Uh... Indeed, uh, these uh, curves can be discussed in terms of some uh, dependencies. Uh, for example, H critical is a function of temperature with some H zero and temperature correction with this temperature in some power uh, with a power law dependence. Yes, in order to, and this is a critical exponent. And um, if, this, if it is a second order phase transition, if it is a first order phase transition, we, because here you have a second order phase transition here and here, and here you have first order phase transitions. And in order to discuss this effect, you should, uh, uh, on a mean field, on or classical level, or classical energy level, you should calculate uh, your elementary excitation dispersion then you calculate average uh, aver average um, uh, uh, correction to your uh, spin value, to your average spin value. And, and, uh, and uh, usually, I'm not sure that this is the case, but usually you can just plug this, uh, the dependence of your average spin into equations, for example, into this kind of formulas, your average spin is instead of saturated spin and calculate correction to the critical fields, uh, temperature induced. Maybe, but it should be checked. Checked. This trick isn't working, it will not work here, but uh, then you should calculate corrections to the, you should calculate uh, free energy of your system and a low temperature expansion due to your magnets, for example using the using green functions etc using the uh, well developed Feynman diagram technique for calculation uh, for calculating uh, um, uh, free energies and then compare compare them and then you will be able to judge for example slope of about to say something about slope of this curves and up to which temperatures is this approach expected to work Oh, so um, temperatures, yeah. uh, sm in small temperature regions. If you can, if you want to discuss these slopes, you will work in a small yeah. temperature approximation, and you will. If you would like to work here, as was already pointed out, you can take Landau Landau expansion in in orders of uh, in powers of order parameter. And then you will obtain these uh, curves uh, directly from your calculations. And in the same manner, it should be done for the this uh, imaginary perpendicular axis of uh, electric field at small electric fields. Uh, I suppose yes. There will be some small corrections to the corresponding critical fields, uh, uh, fields of phase transitions, and you can judge about them 
using small electric field expansion, for example, yes. Okay, um, I don't see any further questions. So uh, let us thank Oleg again. And with this, we conclude our today's PCS IBS seminar. Thank you all for joining.